All right, hello, and welcome to the first in a series of videos that I wanted to do on uh, my issued um, Marine Corps TAPS kit. Um, in the Marine Corps, the TAPS kit is usually just referred to as the chest rig. However, uh, in the Army, it's referred to as the TAPS or, or the uh, Tactical Assault Panel. And it is the issued solution for load carriage without plates um, that we're currently using. As with many things that are issued, it kind of misses the mark in some ways. However, in a lot of places where you go, in the Marine Corps or the Army, um, it doesn't matter. What you are given is what you have to use and that's all there is to it. So uh, this is going to be the first in a series of three videos that um, I'm going to cover this kit, how I use it, and all the modifications that I've made to it to make it a little more bearable. Um, in this video specifically, I'm going to go through the modifications. Uh, the next video, I'm going to go through um, the stuff I carry on my body in addition to this kit. And then in the third video, I'm going to cover everything that I uh, carry within the kit itself. Um, all of this being a patrol type oriented kit. Um, so to get right into it, uh, if you know the TAPS, you know that it's going to come with this Y harness thing, which isn't super good. Uh, it doesn't really support your shoulders very well, and it also doesn't support the bottom of the chest rig very well. So you kind of get the worst of both worlds when it comes to harnesses. So the number one upgrade that you need to make, if nothing else, is upgrade your harness. So what I've done is I've upgraded to an H harness. If you prefer an X harness, obviously you can use that, but it's super easy. The buckles on the front of the taps are one inch hardware. So they just click right into any harness. This one happens to be a Mayflower harness that I had laying around from another chest rig. Um, and then onto the back strap. On the back strap, what I've done, is, well, how the taps comes, is it only comes with one strap coming out of the sides here and it's just a length of webbing that comes out like this and then on the end of it there's a male uh, male buckle um, and that's part of the problem with it it just doesn't really work very well uh, so what I've done is the strap normally comes off of the middle row here I've cut that off um, I own this taps kit uh, stole it fair and square so um, no, I'm just kidding but if you don't uh, and you have to turn this back in then maybe don't do that you can just roll it up and tape it so it's out of the way but I've cut it off um, so that's a consideration so to start with the back strap what I've done is I just ran lengths of shot cord through the last row of molly uh, I've done this on both sides with a couple tri-glide buckles and some webbing straps that I wasn't using. Done this on both sides. So now my back strap clips together and has a little bit of stretch to it, which I really like. Some people don't though. If you don't like it, then you could do the same thing with 550 cord and you would accomplish the same same goal. Um, the shoulder straps is where it got really difficult. So the first thing that I did was I tried to use the um, split bar buckles that would just take up the last row of molly. But the problem with that was that because of this big large seam here that's on the taps, as well as the plastic stiffener, it was taking that buckle and it was pushing it away from my body as I was wearing the kit. And what it was doing was it was loosening my harness as I was wearing it. And that obviously wasn't working. I would get done with a rock or a patrol and my harness would be really loose. My chest rig's like hanging off of me. And that's horrible, that's a terrible feeling. So that wasn't working, I, I had to do something else. So that was prototype one. Prototype two, I don't know what these buckles are called, but uh, was these buckles and these buckles and these buckles actually worked really really well 
they didn't loosen, they held the harness very securely. Um, but the problem with these and why I stopped using them is because they took up two columns of molly instead of one. And it wasn't allowing me to mount my canteen pouches, which I wanted to put on there. So I went away from that. And for a while, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. Um, I couldn't find a way to get buckles on it. And I, I just kind of had this thing sitting in my closet in like the prototype phase. And uh, I didn't know what I was going to do until I was scrolling on eBay one day. And I saw these. Uh, they come in packs of two. Uh, what they are is they're Eagle Industries, the, the uh, modular uh, assault pack plate carrier adapter straps. Yes, the, uh, the modular assault pack plate carrier adapter straps. It's a, it's, it's a mouthful, but what they are is they're made to clip on to the bottom of the Eagle Industries mat pack, and then you put the mail buckles on your plate carrier. And it's just to it's just to it's just to clip it on and give you a quick detach. But I saw these and I knew right away that they were perfect. So to kind of demonstrate on my dangler here, what you do with these, I have a strap, I put my back strap. What you do with these is you go through your last row of molly on your taps. And then it snaps. And then you have a buckle on there. Um, so that was perfect. You can get them on eBay, they're super cheap. I don't think anyone ever used these for what that they were intended for. So everyone just has a bunch of them and they're just selling them for like $3.99 a piece. Um, and then in addition to that, to the snap, I put a big zip tie on each of them just to make sure that, that never comes unsnapped and it never uh, like rotates. And it's been super solid. I've used it for uh, rucks, patrols and stuff since and I've never had any issues with my harness uh, getting loose or coming undone or anything of the sort. Or and I've never had these come unsnapped. But you know, the zip tie, I'm super, super double safe with the zip tie there. So that covers the harness. Uh, probably the most important modification that you can make, um, but I'm going to take it off just for the rest of the video so it's not dragging around, around the table. Uh, the next upgrade that I want to talk about is the magazine pouches. So um, the magazine pouches, if you didn't know, the Haley Strategic MP2 magazine inserts fit straight into the taps. Now you kind of have to upgrade the magazines because the taps magazine pouches they have these flaps on them and they worked fine when I had aluminum mags but being that the P mags are just a little bit bigger they no longer secure over the magazines so you got no retention um, if you just leave them inside there like that they just fall right out so that wasn't working so I had these laying around from a Haley Strategic chest rig that I had used before, and I thought, hey, I'll just pop them right in there and see if they work. Throw them right in. I've got no form of retention on these, no Velcro, no, no nothing. And they're rock solid, they don't move, um, and they never pull out of there. So that being said, a lot of people cut these flaps off of their taps. I haven't done that. Uh, so I would recommend that you don't do that uh, because if you did cut them off then maybe the, the you might have problems with with that insert coming out So I got four inserts on my front four magazine pouches here um, and Then on my three I've got uh, I've got bungee retention uh, as well for the double retention and this one is obviously my, my my fast magazine pouch my emergency reload <coughs> Uh, so moving on, next modification that I made was on my radio pouch. Um, so on the radio pouch, on the sides of the taps, there's radio pouches, one on each side. It's slightly larger than the, than, than the magazine pouch and it does fit a radio just fine. Um, like a military size radio, like a 152, an embitter, 163, something like that. It, it'll fit in, in there, but the problem is retention. They still have these flaps that 
These flaps actually have adjustable height. You can kind of unvelcro them and you can make them really tall. But I didn't want to rely on the flaps for the radio. Um, because one, this flap is horrible to use. Like it really doesn't, it's not even long enough to go over the top of like a military radio, especially when you have like antennas and push to talks come, and I push to talks coming out of it and stuff. So I just tucked that down in there. And what I used is uh, some pull tabs. I had some extra pull tabs just from some old magazine pouches that I, um, you can see here, run a length of shock cord through, run one end of the split bar buckle through, and then that works. I did the same thing on this side, but instead of shock cord, I used 550 cord, and I just tied it into the molly. Uh, this pull tab just goes right in between the center on this canteen pouch here. Now for the Velcro, uh, on, on the taps is male side Velcro, so I had a pouch with, it, it was actually a cry precision pouch, um, which I think is really funny that I cut a cry precision pouch to mod my issued tabs kit, but whatever. Um, so I had, uh, it, it, it's just a piece of female Velcro that happened to have a loop sewn, sewn onto it. Anything that you have that fits that criteria will work. And then I just put a piece of tape on there to make sure that that Velcro it, uh, never comes unpeeled from each other. So uh, my, my, my radio would go in there and then buckle comes over the top, piece of shock cord to get positive retention on, on that and my radio is rock solid. It, it doesn't come out of there, it doesn't shift around. Uh, the last modification that I made to my taps is uh, the dangler. So I actually made this kit, or I was more or less in the process of making this kit before that Spiritus released their TAPS upgrade kit, and it's really cool because I pretty much like did all the stuff that they're doing with their kit, and it would have been really awesome to be able to buy that all in one go instead of having to piece, uh, have to piece it together like I did. So really sick product by, a, by, a, by a Spiritus, but uh, this is not the spirit is dangler. This is, this is, this is different. Um, so you can put a dangler on any taps kit, uh, depending on the pouch. So, um, ideally you're going to need to use a pouch that has the, uh, tactical tailor type Molly that just the whole back of the pouch is covered in loop for the Molly. And what you do is you take one of these short malice clips. There's a, there's a black one, but a short malice clip. And you can see that they have two settings. You're, you're, you're gonna put your malice clip on your short setting here. You're gonna go through the first side and you're gonna keep pushing it through and it's on the short setting. So now you have this thing set to where it's two, two mollies wide. You can see on this pouch, this, this would be row number one, and if there was molly on this row, this would be row number two, and then it ends right there. So you put that on the short setting. Um, and then, I'll do that. Um, you put the bottom side of it through the top row of molly on your pouch, whichever pouch you want to use. And then you put the other end, the open end, through the bottom row of, row of molly on your taps. And you have a dangler. I use this to, for a medical, but the main reason why I made this is because I needed a way to horizontally carry one of these pop flare pouches. If you've ever used the military pop flares or seen them, you know that they're like humongous and there's like no real good way to carry them. So I, like most of the time when guys get issued them, they just end up like putting them inside their pockets or like stuffing them in mag pouches and the, it, it just doesn't work very well. Um, so I would just put the malice clip through right there and right there like that. 
and I would carry those, those pot flares horizontally. Um, I stopped doing that because I, um, I stopped using this because I stopped using the pot flares as much. And so I switched it over to an IFAC so I got everything on the chest rig all the time. Um, I used to just be running my IFAC inside that fanny pack. But um, last thing, I don't really know if you would consider this a modification, but because of the way that the taps is shaped, the first and sixth magazine pouch don't really uh, fit mags very well. Uh, well, they fit mags, but it's really difficult to pull the mags out and insert them because they the pouches kind of get squished when it wraps far, far around your body. So I use them to carry tourniquets. I've got two, one on each side, and then I use the standard flap, and I just wrote, uh, just marked TQ on both of those. So not really a modification, but a consideration. So um, I believe that covers all the modifications that, that I've made to my taps uh, to make it a little more usable. Again, if the taps is something that you have to use, uh, doing, these, doing these modifications is gonna make it uh, way more usable for you. Or if you're a prepared citizen and the taps is something that you want to use because these, are, these can be obtained very cheaply and all, and all these modifications can be done on the, on, on the cheap. Um, if that is something that you need to hit as, as part of your criteria, uh, then you can really put together a really effective, um, well thought out system with the taps. So thanks for watching. Please, uh, please uh, stay tuned. Uh, the next video that I'm gonna be releasing is gonna be on the gear that I carry within my pockets. And then uh, the final video is gonna be covering everything that I carry within the uh, taps. So thanks for watching. See you next video.